Good morning children and everybody watching. Welcome to our latest assembly and we'll start in the usual way. Let us remember that everything we say and everything we do is done in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Father Tim is with me and he hasn't actually told me why we're wearing football scarves. Father Tim. Good morning Mr T and, and good morning, hello everybody. Uh, today's assembly is going to be about faith and football and no better man to answer some questions on these two important matters. So Mr Tim, just to be clear, you haven't had any warning of what I'm going to ask you? <laughs> no, I haven't. Good. Are you nervous? Not at all. Okay. So, I am going to give you three football sayings. I'm going to start them and you have to finish them. Okay. okay. The first one is, they think it's all over. It is now. Correct. So, this is our history element of the assembly today. Can you tell us what that means? Uh, this was uh, uh, the World Cup final on the 30th of July 1966 and there were some fans who got onto the pitch because I believe that the referee had blown the final whistle as one of the England players marched towards the goal and the commentator said there's some people on the pitch they think it's all over then the goal went in and then he said it is now. Now just for those who might still not be quite sure what event we're talking about the World Cup final 1966 which England won for the first and only time. Great and who did they beat? West Germany. West Germany correct and what was the score? At the end. At the end. 4-2. Four 4-2 two. Four two. fantastic. Why is that day so important? Um, it's the only time England have won the World Cup. It, the World Cup was in England and the date itself is important because it's also my birthday. Well, there we are. Put it in your diaries. The next footballing saying is, sick as a parrot. Do you know where the phrase sick as a parrot comes from? So, I would have a guess at something to do with uh, long journeys on a boat. Well, it might be, but my research shows me that there was a viral flu that was spread from parrots to humans that led them to vomit and therefore sick as a parrot is a reference to that. So that is our science and culture element, element to the assembly. And we'll come back to when people say sick as a parrot, but it was the 1970s. So finally, football isn't a matter of life or death. It's far more important than that. Correct. Who said that? Um, Bill Shankly. Bill Shankly, who was manager of... Liverpool. Correct. So, faith and football. Could you just tell us, Mr T, and these are probably the two biggest things in your life. We'll throw family in as well, but faith and football. What do these two things mean to you? Well, there is a link between the both of the things because they are two things that I've um, been brought up with. Our house, when we were children, was very rich in faith. And my father was an Aston Villa fan and he passed that on to us. Very good. Now, I think that uh, football and faith have a lot in common. And I wonder whether you've ever thought about this. People gather for football and they gather for mass once a week. They sing together. They stand and sit at the same time. And generally, they pray for a happy outcome in both situations. But Mr T, and I believe that's where faith and football can go in other directions, because you never come away from Mass having lost. You never come away from Mass thinking, could do better. You're always winners with God. Don't you agree? Absolutely. 
Good, okay. So we're coming now to the return of football and obviously I have my sacred, uh, I make it look like a vestment but in fact it's a Wolverhampton Wanderer scarf and uh, I have my Aston Villa scarf um, and by the time this goes live on YouTube we will have played twice. So at the moment, smiling may not be on Monday. But do you not think this is where faith comes in, Mr. Tian? Well, often it has been said that people have uh, found faith whilst at a football match and, and started praying. In fact, one occasion I do remember uh, Cardinal Vincent Nichols tells the story that he actually, God found him on the terraces of, uh, of Liverpool. FC and that's where he got the calling so there's a link there. Very good. So friends in our assembly today we've covered England winning the World Cup final on football 1966. We've heard sick as a parrot a phrase that football fans will often say when they have just lost a game and we have seen how football and faith have something in common. Now I've got one final question on this for you, Mr. Tian. What do 1936, 1959, 1967 and 2020 have in common? Um, is it to do with football? It is to do with football. Say the years again, 36. 36, 59, 67 and 2020. Uh, is it Wolverhampton Wanderers in Europe or something like that? No, I, I, I would like to say at this Have point... Have I hit the post? <laughs> you, you, I, think, I think it's, uh, yes, uh, I think you need to take the free kick again. But I think um, I'd like to say these years have nothing in common because 1936, 1959, 1967 were all years that Coventry City were promoted and Aston Villa were relegated and therefore 2020 will not have anything in common given that Coventry City were promoted last week. So now our friends from year six are going to sing together something that began as a hymn and now fans its way onto football terraces being sung by almost every set of football supporters. And I hope by the end of it, we're left in no doubt as to which team we support here at St. Chad's. So welcome back to the second half and uh, Mr. T and uh, Sunday was Father's Day, uh, a special day. What would that day mean to you? Under normal circumstances it would be a chance to eat together but of course we've been in lockdown for several weeks so we've, we've done that quite a bit. Um, but it would be a chance for perhaps my children to uh, try be nice to me and do some odd jobs around the house, mm -hmm. perhaps. Good. Okay. So we pray for and thank God for the gift of fathers, of dads. We pray for dads. We pray for those who are with us. We pray for dads who are maybe now with God in heaven. We pray for dads who are at a distance. We always remember that we call God our Father in heaven. So let us say that special prayer now. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Last Sunday was also called the Day for Life and the theme of the Day for Life in the United Kingdom this year is Choose Life. We are called to see life as sacred, holy, a gift from God to be protected and cherished at every stage. And this week also we will celebrate the great feast of St John Fisher and St Thomas More, great saints and martyrs of England. In the book of Deuteronomy, the fifth book of the Bible, it is written, the Lord says, see today I set before you life and prosperity or death and disaster. Choose life then. We thank God for the gift of our life. We have come to see in recent weeks that life can sometimes be fragile, something that we seek to keep strong. May God bless you and your families. And don't forget to say a prayer for me and for Mr. Tian today. And as we finish our assembly, we're going to hear a beautiful song called The Father's Song. And Mr. Teen, shall we finish with the sign of the cross? Let us remember that everything, everything we say and everything, everything we do is done in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.